This video is a very brief introduction to three-phase motors as a part of our air core air conditioning. For those of you taking a classroom course or a, or a regular course in air conditioning and refrigeration, you're going to deal much more with three-phase motors when it comes to the refrigeration side of the program. However, there it is worth talking a little bit about in air conditioning because you are going to hit three-phase motors when you deal with rooftop units, package units, and heavier industrial and commercial equipment. For the technician that's servicing residential and light commercial, you're not going to see a ton of three-phase motors there. So just keep it in mind a little bit as we go through this. Three-phase motors are very rugged, they're reliable, and they're a lot more dependable than other types of motors. They are much stronger than single phase motors. They can handle heavier loads. They don't require any starting components as we've already talked about. Things like the current coil relay, the potential relay, they're just not required. And they're able to start heavy loads. You will not see capacitors on three phase motors. So if you take a, if you're at a rooftop unit and you're looking at the equipment and you see no capacitors on the compressor, and you see capacitors on the fan motors, the outdoor fan motors and the blower motor, you're gonna know that that is a three phase unit. However, the motors on the condenser fans and on the blower motor are single phase. That is a huge, that is very common in rooftop configurations. Don't get confused by it. So single phase is basically a single sine wave. We have an L1 and an L2, okay, and 60 times a second we are going to have zero voltage okay because we're going to be in the center 60 times per second we're going to have zero voltage three phase we have an l1 and l2 and an l3 okay we will never between any of the legs we will never have zero voltage at any one time okay if you take any look at the if you take a look at any point in time here where one leg is in zero, and again, you go straight up and down here, you will see that the other legs are not in zero. Okay, so you have a voltage difference or potential between any two legs of the circuit at any time. Okay, even if one leg is in zero. So from a motor perspective, you will never have what we call a dead spot. There's always power to that motor or load. So the characteristics is you have a three phase voltage supply, you have dual or single voltage motors. A single voltage motor has three wires, a dual voltage motor has 69 wires. The stator is three separate windings. Electrically, they're 120 degrees apart. Three times 120 is the full circle of 360. So the, the motor windings electrically are exactly 120 degrees apart. There's two winding configurations, a delta and a Y configuration. All three windings should have the same ohm reading. That's extremely important when you're troubleshooting. Okay, all three windings should have the identical ohm reading. That's a big difference from single phase equipment. Okay, single phase equipment, you'll remember start, run, and common all have different ohm readings. In three phase, that is not the case. You do not have a start run in common. You have an L1, L2, L3. To reverse the rotation of the motor, reverse any two leads. That's why it's so important when you first do a startup, after replacing a motor, installing equipment, you have to verify proper rotation. So you have some standard numbering. Okay, and again, if it's a single, if it's a single numbering, or single voltage, you won't have two windings here, but you have standard numbering for a Y connected motor. Okay, eight five and two, six nine and three, seven four and one. Okay, and this motor is going in a clockwise rotation. Standard numbering for a delta connected motor. Again, going in a clockwise rotation. You have one four seven and two five eight three, six, and nine. And if you look at these wires, it makes a lot of sense. So why high voltage connections, okay, you would connect L3, you connect your wires to L2, L1, and L5, you jump together 
six and nine. Okay. Seven and four. And five and eight. Okay. And it tells you right that. It will always tell you on the label what wires you jump together. For a Y wound low voltage connection, you're going to jump together six and nine. 8 and 2, 7 and 1, and then you're going to connect 4, 5, and 6 together. These are standard. It's an industry standard. For delta wound high voltage connections, you're going to wire 5 and 8 together, 4 and 7, and 9 and 6. For delta wound low, low voltage connections, you're going to connect 2, 8, and 4, 3, 5, and 9, 1, 7, and 6. And it tells you how you're going to connect your L1, L2, L3. So it's very important to look at the label because you might have to reconfigure the motor or you might have extra leads that you need to know what to do with. Normally these leads either have a little tag on it with a number on it or they're going to be different colors. So just to make sure you get the right one in the right position because if you get it wrong you can actually burn out a motor winding. And that means that your company or you has to replace that motor. So three-phase motors, again, no start components, no capacitors. They will run backwards if connected incorrectly. So just reverse two leads. You'll be fine. It will turn it around. And if you have to troubleshoot it, one of the first things you want to do is, make, is ohm out all the windings and make sure the windings are the same resistance. It's sort of important.